makers of Camel Cigarettes present Dick Powell as Richard Diamond, private detective. Not one single case of throat irritation due to smoking camels. That was the report of leading throat specialists in a coast-to-coast test of hundreds of people, people with normal throats who smoked only camels for 30 days. Start your own 30-day camel test tonight. Smoke only camels for 30 days. You'll discover how rich and flavorful camels are, and you'll learn how well camels will agree with your throat. Pack after pack, week after week. Here transcribed is Richard Diamond, Private Detective, starring Dick Powell. Diamond Detective Agency, your crime is my crime. Oh, no. Hi-ho, Helen. Oh, Rick, honestly. The slogans are bad enough, but must you set them to music? Now, dear, dear, this is the age of the singing commercial. Keep with the times, kid. Mm, I'm the gal who could have married a Yale man, and what do I pick? A singing detective. Well, you just appreciate the finer things of life, Helen. Hang up and call me back. What? Just thought of a new slogan. Oh, Rick, you can preview your new slogan tonight. You are coming over tonight, aren't you? I are. Well, so agreeable. This can only mean one thing. You haven't got a client. Oh, Helen, you're so fiendishly clever. Seriously, Rick. I'll be expecting you at seven. And just once, try to be on time. Now, that is a challenge. But I... Oh, bless my little square head. Mm, I might have known it. Client? Even more surprising. Rick, I'm in no mood for jokes. It's Lieutenant Walter Levinson, dear, and he's no mood for jokes. The old grouch. What's Walt doing there? I'll ask him. What are you doing here, Walt? Rick, this is serious business. Finish your conversation, then we'll talk. Oh. What did he say? Honey, I'd better hang up. For once, Walt isn't kidding. See you at seven. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Rick. Well, what's it all about, Fatty? I haven't seen you look like this for a long time. I was in the neighborhood. I thought I'd stop by and tell you the news myself. A punk named Smiley Brill shot one of our cops, Rick. Oh, Smiley Brill, huh? Didn't all punk like Smiley had the nerve to pull a trigger? Cop caught him breaking into a pawn shop. Smiley got scared and fired. Uh-huh. Well, Walt, I'm sorry to hear this, but I, I don't get it. Why act like a lost soul? Lots of cops get shot up. They take that chance when they put on a badge. I know that, Rick. This cop was Ben Johnson. What? Come again, Walt. Johnson, Rick. Ben Johnson. <laughs> There are times when words can't describe a feeling. This was one of those times. Years ago, when I was a green rookie cop, I made lots of mistakes, got discouraged. But old Ben Johnson always took me under his wing and helped me over the rough spots. Ben helped a lot of rookies like me, and everyone knew it and loved him for it. Yeah, now I knew why Walt's expression looked like the world had ended, and I wasn't glad I knew. Happened early this morning, Rick. Uh, where's Ben now? General Hospital. Doc gives him a 50-50 chance. Well, what about Smiley Brill? You got him? No. I set up a dragnet, but he's slimy. He might slip through. Rick, I was hoping maybe you'd like to help us get him. Well, you know I will, Walt. Only if I find him, I won't guarantee you'll get him in one piece. Now, cut it out, Rick. You know how I feel. I'd like to break Smiley with my bare hands. Only I'm a cop. So are you, even without the old badge. I'll skip the speeches. Where do I start? Smiley hangs around the Bowery quite a bit. And chances are he's hiding down there. Well, the Bowery boys don't talk much to police, but they might to you. Well, I have some friends down there. I might get a lead. Keep in touch with my office. And remember, Rick, I want Smiley alive, if possible. Sure, Walt. If possible. <laughs> I got in my car and drove toward the Bowery. I kept seeing two faces in front of me. 
One white-haired policeman ready for retirement, lying in a hospital fighting for his life. And the other, a weasel-faced punk with a slimy smile. You don't often get mad in my business. It doesn't pay off. But there are times when it can't be helped. In the Bowery, I began looking for Leo Watts, a little panhandler with a big heart. I'd done Leo a favor a few months back, and I knew I could count on him to return it. I finally located him in a mission, working over a bowl of hot soup. Well, hello, Leo. Uh, Huh? Well, Richard Diamond. What brings you down here? You broke? Well, not quite, Leo. Uh, sit down, have some soup. It's free. Well, I'd uh, I'd rather have some help, Leo. Oh, oh, sure, Rick. Anything I can do, you know that. Uh, tell me, uh, do you know a guy named Smiley Brill? Smiley Brill, yeah. I've seen him around. I don't know him so well, though. What about his friends, Leo? Know anyone he might go to if he was in trouble? I'm afraid not, Rick. I can ask around, though. Some of the boys might know. Uh, would you do that, Leo? I'd appreciate it. Sure. You sit tight, Ricky. And finish my soup. I'll be right back. Leo disappeared, and I waited in the mission. A little old lady brought me a fresh bowl of soup, gave me a lecture, and left with a rewarded attitude after I promised to give up Muscatel. Finally, about 20 minutes later, Leo returned. Not much, Rick, but something to start on. Uh, Smiley had a girl he used to see a lot last year. Whether he's still seen her, I don't know. What's her name? Jewel Sanka. The dancers at the Gaiety down the street. <laughs> Quite a dance, too. Well, thanks, Leo. I'll have a talk with her. Uh, if she can help you, meet me back here in a few hours. Maybe I can dig up some more Smiley's past. Good, good. Only suppose I meet you out front instead, Leo. I just can't take another bowl of soup. At the Gaiety Theater, I found a stage doorman with a case of bad eyesight. Five dollars made it even worse, and I got by him without as much as a hey you. Jewel Sanker was on stage, and I waited in the wings. The boys wanted more, but Jewel threw them a kiss and skipped off the stage right into the arms of yours truly. I'm sorry, dear, but I've given up Muscatel. I have to have some vices. Huh? Oh, Skipper. Joel, I'd like to talk to you. So would every guy in that audience out there. Of course, you don't look like most of the guys. Your clothes are pressed. Carry a handkerchief, too. I'm a real dude. Oh, you're cute. Only I've got no time to talk. I've got to change for my next number. Mind if I walk along to your dressing room? Suit yourself. Joel, I, uh, I'm looking for an old friend of yours. I've got a lot of old friends. This one's named Smiley Brill. Oh, him. A real nothing. What do you want with that, stoop? A little talk. You're a great one for having talks with people. Mm, I was a lonely child. Here's where I changed. Do you want to come in? Hmm, silly question. Oh, stop dreaming. I forgot his screen in here. Well, that should bring my blood pressure back down to normal. Wait till you see my next costume. It's made out of carnations. Oh, I bet you smell divine. <laughs> yeah. Sit down. I'll be right out. What did you say you wanted to see? Uh, Smiley Brill. Oh, yeah. Him and me broke up. When did you see him last? About a week ago. Haven't seen him for about three months, and then he shows up. He wants me to go out with him again. Mm, did you? No, he's a bum. Him and me always used to fight about him not working. When we went out, I always had to pay the check. There. How do you like the costume? Well, well, I can see why it didn't take you long to get in it. Only aren't you afraid those flowers might wilt? Yeah, that's the idea. I see. Uh, getting back to Smiley. Oh, forget him. He's a deadbeat. Besides, I've got to get back on stage. Uh, just one more question. When you saw Smiley last week, did he say where he was living? Uh-uh. Hmm. Well, do you know of anywhere he might be? No. Wait a minute. He tried to give me some line about working. I said something about the merry-go-round. Merry-go-round? Yes. Said he had a part-time job now and... Oh, I don't remember all he said. Look, I've got to go. Time for my number. Drop around again sometime, huh? Glad you got here early, Rick. How'd you make out with Jewel? 
Oh, she doesn't know where Smiley is, Leo. But, uh, tell me, is there any place around here called the merry-go-round? A bar, maybe? Merry-go-round? No, not around here. Why? Uh, never mind. How did you do? Well, I asked around. Smiley ain't been around the street much these days, but I did find out where Bertie Morgan lives. A couple of years back, Bertie and Smiley served time together. Guys get pretty close when they're in stir. Yeah. Well, maybe Bertie knows where Smiley would hide. Worth a chance anyway, Leo. Well, here's Bertie's address in this paper. <laughs> I hope you can make it out. <laughs> well, Bertie's a real nut. He keeps nothing but birds in his room. <laughs> the place looks like a pet shop. Thanks, Leo. See you later. I started up the street toward the address Leo had given me. Finding Smiley Brill was developing into a slow search. All I could do was keep questioning people who might know Smiley's whereabouts and hope for a break. I located Bertie Morgan's rooming house, but I didn't go right in. Instead, I went into a drugstore on the corner and put in a call to Walt Levinson. Homicide, Levinson. Rick, Walt, your men turn up anything on Brill yet? Not a thing. How about you? Well, so far, nothing. I'm following up another lead, though, now. If it doesn't take me anywhere, I'm afraid I'll be stuck. Don't quit now, Rick. I just heard from the hospital Ben Johnson didn't make it. Oh, no. Follow that lead, Rick. Get Smiley. Yeah, Walt, I'll get him. If I have to stay on his trail till doomsday, I'll get him. Before we continue with Richard Diamond, here are a few words about smoking enjoyment. After all the various tests for cigarette mildness, camels lead all other cigarettes in popularity by billions of cigarettes a year. One important reason is camel's flavor, flavor that gives you rich cigarette enjoyment pack after pack, week after week. Another big reason for camel's overwhelming popularity lead is camel's mildness. Mildness proved this way. In a coast-to-coast -coast test, hundreds of men and women, people with normal throats, smoked only camels for 30 days. During that time, noted throat specialists made careful weekly examinations of the throats of those smokers. And the throat specialists reported not one single case of throat irritation due to smoking camels. Why wait any longer to start your own 30-day camel test? Smoke camels for 30 days. See for yourself how flavorful camels are. Prove to yourself how well camels agree with your throat, pack after pack, week after week. How mild, how mild, how mild can a cigarette be? Make the camel 30-day test and you'll see. Smoke camels and see. And now, back to Richard Diamond, Private Detective, starring Dick Powell. So Ben Johnson hadn't made it. Now I was looking for a killer. A killer named Smiley Brill. I crossed the street, went into the rooming house. Bertie Morgan had been in prison with Smiley, and Bertie lived in room number 12. I went there. Yeah. Bertie Morgan was a little man with a nose that resembled a parrot's beak. He had beady, bird-like eyes that stared straight at you and never seemed to blink. Behind him, I could see that his room was filled with caged birds, all chirping. Bertie Morgan was well named. Eh? What you want, bud? Well, I'm, uh, I'm selling a new brand of bird seed. Thought you just might be in the market. Bird seed, eh? That's right. I got plenty of bird seed. Oh, but none like this, friend. Get your foot out of the door. Now, Bertie, think of your canary. Beat it. Now, move aside, Bertie. I'm coming in. <laughs> Here. Oh, now that's better. What's the big idea of forcing your way in here? Sorry, Bertie, but I'm tired of being polite. You got no right here. Look, you're scaring my birds. Well, they'll get over it. Now, you tell me. What about Smiley Brill? Well, what about him? He's a friend of yours, isn't yeah, he? I got no friends. I just stay here and tend to my birds. Birds I like, people I don't. You seen Brill since your prison days together? Sure, but that don't make us bosom pals. See, who are you? How long ago since you've seen him? A uh, month, maybe two. You sure of that? Sure, I'm sure. How long were you in prison together? I don't have to answer your question! 
You want a broken nose? <laughs> Wait a minute, now look. Well, I'm not kidding, pal. I want answers. How long did you share a cell with Smiley? <clears throat> Two years. By that, I mean that when you get out, you got to pat around together. No, but it does mean you might know where Smiley is now. In two years, he must have told you a lot about the people he knew, where he hung around. Well, sure, yeah, but... Sit down, Bertie. Huh? Sit down. (laughs) Now, tell me everything you remember Smiley talking about in jail. Well, look, that was a long time ago. Then refresh your memory. Who did he say his friends were? Think back, Bertie, then start talking. I was being hard on Bertie, but it was my last chance. He began talking about everything he could remember that he and Smiley had talked about. Girls, sports, anything. Finally, after about ten minutes, Bertie was getting tired, and he still hadn't said anything that might give me a lead. Uh, give me a break, huh? Listen to my birds. They're hungry. i got to feed them. Now they can wait. You still haven't said anything important, Bertie. Yeah, so how should I know what you think's important? I told you what I remember him saying, that's all. What did Smiley plan on doing when he got out of jail? Yeah, having a good time, that's all he wanted. Did he talk about work? What kind of a job is he going to look for? Job, Smiley? <laughs> Don't make me laugh. He didn't want to go to work. His uncle even wrote and offered him a job, but this guy's strictly a bum. Well, what about his uncle? You didn't mention him before. Yeah, I didn't think of him before. Well, you're thinking of him now. Tell me about him. Yeah, he's an old geezer. Joe Brill raised Smiley after his mom and pa kicked out. You say he offered Smiley a job. What kind of a job? No, oh, handyman, I guess. The old boy runs a business over on 34th Street, a kid place. A what? Oh, you know, one of them toyland spots. He's got a corner lot there with some rides on it, electric swings and that sort of thing. I went past it once. It's a nice place. Rides for kids, huh? Merry-go-round? Huh? This place. It has a merry-go-round? Yeah, a big one. Hey, why don't you go write it and leave me alone? Uh, maybe I will, Bertie. Give me the address of the place. And you can go feed your birds. It was the first break I'd had. Smiley's girlfriend had told me that he was working at a merry-go-round. Now I knew where it was. It was getting dark as I turned up 34th Street, but I spotted the lights of the Toyland. Parked went toward the merry-go-round in the center of the lot. It was the only ride still operating. There were two or three children riding the wooden animals around and around. In the center of the carousel, I spotted an old man standing beside a big lever. As I approached, the man pulled the lever toward him, and the carousel slowly stopped moving around. Okay, kids, all off. Come on now. Get off there, sonny. Run along home now. Oh, uh, Mr. Brill. That's right. Only I'm closing up now. Well, I, I don't want to ride. I just want to ask you some questions. What about? Uh, about your nephew. Huh? Yes, I'm looking for Smiley. He was working here a week ago. Well, yeah, he was, but he ain't here now. Well, where is he? I don't know. He hasn't been around for a few days. Who are you and why are you looking for Smiley? Well, I'm a private detective, Mr. Brill. Smiley's in trouble. Real trouble. Oh, uh, listen, I got to go back to the shack over there, turn out the lights. City raises cane if I stay open after six. Well, I'll walk with you. You know, uh, you don't seem surprised that your nephew's in trouble, Brill. Surprised? Mr. Anything that boy does is no surprise to me. Tried to raise him right, but he run wild. Figured if I give him a job here, he might settle down. I was wrong, I guess. Mm-hmm. Have you heard from him since this morning? Nope. Oh, this is it. Uh, mister, would you mind reaching up there and pull that light switch? It's too high for me. Oh, sure, sure. There. Now, how about... Oh! When I pulled that switch to turn the lights out, Brill decided to put my lights out, too. He must have hit me with an old piece of pipe, but whatever it was, it caused the blood to rush past my eyes and a million rockets to go off in my head. I don't know how long I was out, but when I came to, I was inside the shack, and I wasn't alone. In the corner stood the old man, but standing over me was the man I'd spent all day to find, Smiley Brill. Come on, Diamond, come on. You ain't dead yet. Mm. Well, well, Smiley Brill, brave man with a gun. Yeah, brave enough to take care of you, Shamus. Smiley, cut out your yapping and get out of here while you can. Shut up, they got a dragnet out for me. I might be picked up alone, but Diamond here gets along real swell with the bulls. He's going to help me get through. Oh, you're crazy, Smiley. You'll never get through. 
I may get along with the police, but so did Ben Johnson. You try and make a break, and the first cop will shoot you on sight. You're a dead man, Smiley. You know that smart talk coming from a guy on the wrong side of this gun? Now get up on your feet. Where's your car, Smiley? Out and back. You still got Diamond's gun? Yeah. Well, keep it on him. I'll check around outside to make sure it's all clear. And don't take any chances. If Diamond so much as blinks an eyelash, pull the trigger. Well, Mr. Brill, you must feel pretty proud of your nephew. Keep quiet. Smiley's a good boy. Just a little while, that's all. Oh, sure, sure. Tell me, Brill, what's going to happen to you? Smiley makes a break for it and leaves you behind. And for helping him escape, you'll be hauled in as an accessory to murder. Murder? What are you talking about? Well, why do you think your nephew's running? Smiley got too much to drink. He stole a car. So that's the line he gave you, huh? Oh, sure. Now, look, mister. I'm the only family Smiley's got. When his pa died, I promised to look after him. Now he's in trouble. I gotta help him get away. So you just stay right there. And this trouble he's in, you think it's car stealing? Well, it's murder, Brill. Smiley killed a cop. You lie. Smiley's wild, but he wouldn't do that. Oh, wouldn't he? Why did the police have a dragnet out? To catch a car thief? Oh, no. Murder, Brill. You think it's your duty to protect him. I wouldn't protect a killer, but Smiley's no killer. Now, you're, you're telling lies, that's all. Well, he'll be coming back soon. You'll help him get away. You'll help a killer get away. Well, I'll ask him. If, if you're telling the truth, well, uh, wait till he gets back. I still think you lie. I'm not lying, Brill. And we're not waiting till Smiley comes back. Stay back! Oh, why? Smiley didn't tell you he killed a cop. That was because he knew you wouldn't help a killer. And if you wouldn't help a killer, you'd hardly turn killer yourself. No, you won't shoot me, Mr. Brill. Now, I'll take my gun. Uh, no, no! <laughs> Give no, it to me! No, no! <clears throat> there. Uh, okay, mister, okay. Maybe I couldn't kill you, but... Smiley's no killer either. You lied about that murder. You're, you're after him for stealing the car, and he's going to have a chance. He's just a wild boy. Come back here. Hey, Smiley, look out. He's got a gun. I shoved the old man away and stepped outside. Smiley had been coming back across the grounds, and the old man's warning made him stop. Then he saw me. It was dark, and we both missed. Then Smiley dove for cover and began firing again. <laughs> I crouched behind the motor box of the electric swing. Smiley! So you, Smiley! Come on out! Come and get me, Samus! I can see as well in the dark as you can! Smiley was in a good spot and he knew it. It was dark, but he was familiar with the grounds. He could edge from one cover to another. There were no more shots for a while. I knew he'd change positions, but I'd have a hard time finding him in the dark. And then I remembered the light switch beside the shack. I edged toward it. I reached the shack and stood up. I pointed my gun out toward the lot and sent my left hand up to the switch. Then I pushed. The lights went on and I spotted Smiley standing in the center of the merry-go-round. He looked stunned at the flood of light. Drop it, Smiley! Why, you... I got him. He staggered, then fell against the big control lever in the center of the machine. The machine started going around, and the painted animals moved up and down as they circled Smiley's still body. I stood there and watched. Funny, but I didn't even feel sorry for Smiley. After all, how many cop killers have music at their funerals? Rick. Yes, Helen, dear? I forgive you for being late. Well, now that makes my little heart go pitter-patter all over the place. Only there's something I want to ask you. Mm hmm That dancer, you see. Jewel. Was she pretty? Well, I, uh... Oh, I suppose uh, you could say she was. Especially in that costume made out of carnations. Uh, I hope you were on your good behavior. Well, I, uh... I didn't pick any flowers, if that's what you mean. Rick, I hate to sound nagging, but, well, I worry about you. In every case, you seem to run into a blonde or a redhead or a brunette, and they all seem to be pretty. Now, isn't that just like a woman? Here I get slugged on the head, shot at, and meet a girl. 
All you worry about is the girl. Oh, you poor dear. Mm. There. Oh. Does your head feel better? Oh, yes, yes, honey. Keep rubbing it. I might even feel well enough to sing a song. Hmm. I knew this conversation would get around to that sooner or later. Helen, you are so suspicious and so right. I get a warm feeling when you're by my side. The kind of warm feeling that my kiss can't hide. Hold me tight and hold me strong. It's so right, it just can't be wrong. Just as long as you're with me. I'll always find my way Your love is like a candle That turns the night to day My heart is yours And come what may That warm feeling is here Oh, that's nice. Thank you, dear. Rick. Mm-hmm. Would I look nice in a costume made out of carnations? Oh, honey, honey, honey. You'd look wonderful in a costume made out of poison ivy. <laughs> Come here. No, Rick. Rick, stop. Rick, stop. Rick, you stopped. Aren't we full of surprises tonight? Dick Powell will return in just a minute. What cigarette do you smoke, doctor? That question was asked of doctors from coast to coast in every branch of medicine. The brand named most was Camel. Why don't you smoke Camels, too? You'll enjoy rich, full flavor and true cigarette mildness. The kind of mildness that lets you really enjoy camels pack after pack, carton after carton. Make your next pack camels. How mild, how mild, how mild mild can a cigarette be? Smoke camels and see. Here's Dick Powell with a special message. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the makers of camels have now sent more than 198 million gift cigarettes to hospitalized veterans and members of our armed forces. This week's packs of gift camels go to Veterans Hospitals, Brooklyn, New York, and Biloxi, Mississippi. Hamilton Air Force Hospital, San Rafael, California. To all hospitals operated by the Caribbean Command of the U.S. Army. Now until next week, enjoy camels. I always do. Tonight's transcribed adventure of Richard Diamond was written and directed by Dick Carr with music by Frank Worth. Virginia Gregg played the part of Helen Asher and Alan Reed was Lieutenant Levinson. Others in the cast were Howard McNear, Herb Butterfield, and Paul Richards. Be sure to listen to another great camel show, Vaughn Monroe and the Camel Caravan, every Saturday night. Men, when you smoke a pipe, it's for pleasure, isn't it? Then use the tobacco that leaves the pleasure in and the bite out. I'm talking about Prince Albert, the National Joy Smoke. Listen. The bite is out and the pleasure's in when you smoke Prince Albert. It's specially treated not to bite your tongue. The bite is out and the pleasure's in. Listen next week for another exciting adventure of Richard Diamond, starring Dick Powell. This is your FBI. The official broadcast from the files of the FBI follows immediately. Stay tuned. This program came to you from Hollywood. America is sold on the American Broadcasting Company.